Hey, you guys. Hi. Guess who's back? <laughs> Look, I said, I said that I had a lot of things on my mind. So I'm going to get all of my ideas out while I still feel motivated. Okay. Hi. Two times in a day. Honestly, if you're a patron or a member, this is the third time you've seen me today. Kimberly is working, okay? <laughs> All right. Um, yes, I'm working, working. So, obviously, I have to talk about Billie Eilish, right? Right? Obviously. Do you do your own eyebrows? No. Somebody said that I'm frozen. Am I frozen? Okay, just let me know. I'm not trying to be frozen. All right, whew, you know. <laughs> all right, let's get let's uh let's get to it. So first of all, um, we have merch in the background. My divest from men water bottle. Don't be thirsty. Divest from men. Yes, I am partnered, but you know he ain't shit either. <laughs> It don't matter. It, it don't matter if it's your nigga, my nigga, like, it ain't shit. <laughs> Men are trash. Um, so that's that. That's on shopforharriet.com. Also, because I, uh, <laughs> he's not gonna see this. Um, I have added um, a memberships option to the Kimberly Nicole Foster YouTube channel and also a memberships option for the Substack. Like it's the same content on the YouTube channel and for the Substack. But there are things that I want to talk about, like private things, right? Like I kind of use this as an area to work through ideas that I don't want to talk about in public. Like something I do want to talk about that will be put up on the memberships for Kimberly Nicole Foster. Again, same content on the memberships and the, the sub stack is I do want to talk about how gender roles have unexpectedly played out in my relationship. Um, there's already a couple of videos already uploaded loaded to the memberships tab on Kimberly Nicole Foster, the YouTube channel. So if you're, you know, nosy or just, you know, really want to go deeper with me on some things, you can go ahead and join so that's exciting, new things. I love having this space, I say all the time. I like having this space to be weirdo Kim and flighty Kim and, you know, pop culture obsessed Kim. And then we can have some delineation where for Harriet is like serious theory Kimberly, social justice Kimberly, rigorous interview Kimberly, right? Like we can just have a little bit of a, a stronger divide between that. So, oh, also, if you are a already a patron on For Harriet, what I'm gonna do is all of the roses and up will just get a free subscription. Like, yeah, so you don't have to double up. That's how that's gonna be. So in the next couple of days, I'll just talk about, you know, how, you know, I'm like a serious feminist who like, accidentally did some weird like gendered shit recently and I and I'm interested in like how I'm gonna navigate that with a partner who is not you know feminist anyways let's get on to it <laughs> um are you gonna upload this on YouTube uh yeah you're so beautiful and admirable oh thank you is it different from the Patreon? The content will be different, right? So, so far, I've just been posting my random lives where I talk about, you know, <laughs> random intimate shit on Patreon. I don't need to keep doing that, right? Like, so from May moving forward, Patreon is for social commentary, social justice, interviews, theory, and... Substack slash the Kimberly Nicole Foster channel is for bullshit. <laughs> but fun bullshit.
it, right? <laughs> um, but again, like if you've already subscribed to the For Harriet Patreon and you're a Rosa enough, which is the $5 tier and up, I'll just go ahead and because you're like an OG supporter, I'll just go ahead and give you like a free subscription so you don't have to like do both. Hopefully that clarifies things. Is your partner a feminist? Not explicitly so. Is he progressive? Yes. I'm not sure. I don't think he would identify as a feminist. No. And I don't really have a problem with that. And I've articulated why I don't have a problem with that extensively on Patreon. <laughs> Uh, um, all right let's move on <laughs> so current partner not feminist okay let's move on so I am a Billie Eilish stan I'm a Billie Eilish fucking stan you guys like <laughs> I just think that Billy is so singular in on so many different ways. First of all, okay, so let's just do like the musically, the songwriting and the arranging and the vocals on particularly like when we all fall asleep, where do we go? Like listen to a song like I Love You. It's really difficult, the kind of vocal control that you have to be able to have to sing so quietly with so much clarity. Like, it really fucking pisses me off when people try to be like, oh, she's whispering. You can't whisper like that, you guys. To do those whispered runs so cleanly, you can't do that. I'm so sorry, you can't, I can't, the rest of y'all can't. Like, that fucking bothers me so, <laughs> don't let me get in my stand bag, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Um, it's so good and interesting, and I like that Billy and Phineas are so smart in their songwriting, and Billy is so smart about how she has chosen to present herself to the world, okay? Uh, <laughs> sorry, I know, I'm yelling, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna yell directly into the microphone anymore, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I just really... <laughs> Um, I think that she's really expertly navigated her career and it's really clear that Billie Eilish did not just stumble into fame like it's been very like particular expertly architected and it's like she's also such a young woman this is a 19 year old you know Ocean Eyes came out when she was 13 and like being so famous getting so famous so fast when you listen to her interviews, she's so self-aware. I really appreciate that. And I even appreciated, you know, when she was doing the the lime green brunette thing, I, you know, appreciated the way that she talked about why she chose to cover her body and her influences, right? I think, you know, she got into some hot water when she said some like unsavory thing about hip hop artists, right? That like hip hop artists are liars. Like, I don't have a problem with that. you like, I'm not particularly pissed about that. I don't find it to be particularly problematic, but because we know that white artists have such an extractive, right? Exploitive relationship to hip hop culture and aesthetics. It's like, just don't say nothing. You know, just don't say nothing, girl, right? In fact, I was just rereading Bell Hooks' Black Looks. There's an, uh, Bell Hooks wrote about Madonna and her relationship to black culture in Black Looks. Cause I wanted to just, you know, I was preparing for this conversation about Billy and maybe I'll do something more intensive about Billy and like the I'm not a girl, not yet a woman pop star transition. Maybe I will. But this, these are just like my off the cuff thoughts. Like that's what this is for. So anyways, um, what I appreciated about first seeing those images from British Vogue. Oh, I forgot that we have this new feature where I can show you the images. Let's look. Okay, that's Billy on the cover of British Vogue giving us tits. 
<laughs> giving us tits, giving us blonde hair, giving us a, a soft makeup look, right? Um, and you know, sculpted waist. Let's let's do the other one. Okay, choose a different asset. Oh, honestly, this shit is fucking y'all. These are such good images. The photographer is Craig McDean. I think a lot of this is Terry Mugler. Um, just so, like, these are good. This is some fucking good imagery, you guys. Let's do another one. Dude, this is my favorite. Dude. Like, come on. Come on, image making. Come on, new era. Giving us femme fatale, giving us 1940s. I'm obsessed with this, right? But of course, everything is complicated. There's no easy way to read Billy or to read the transition that she's made. I know, you know, we love a, an easy narrative. So people are like, agency, sexuality, growth. And then other people are like, coercion, Lolita. And it's like, no, it's, it's both, right? Everybody knows that foundationally my thesis is that agency and coercion can coexist. So our conversations about women and young women in particular and their relationship to sexuality and, and in particular how they image their sexuality, how they perform their sexuality, how they choose to distribute images and videos of their sexualities, like that stuff is really complicated. And it's not helpful for us to be like, oh, it's one thing or the other. Not when we're, especially not when we're talking about somebody who is as smart as Billie Eilish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Over 30 avocado, oh, okay. I didn't know that, that Billie's stand names were avocado. That black is everything. Yes, it's so, so good. I'm just, I'm so, so into it. Um, she looks so different. Yes, yes, such good photography there. Um, and what this whole rollout really underscores is Billie, Billie Eilish is not just like this like virtuosic singer songwriter, right? Like Billie Eilish is a pop star and very self-consciously a pop star. She's doing the evolution thing, right? And even I read the, um, the Vogue, the British Vogue article, right? So even in leading up to unveiling the new look, she wore a wig with the lime green and the dark, right? She wore hats to cover the hair because she had to bleach it three times, right? Billy was really intentional ab about giving us an unveiling, okay? Like a ta-da bitch. That's the shit I'm into. I'm a pop girl. I love pop music. I love spectacle. Billie's a pop girl. That shit is exciting to me as a Billie Eilish fan. Because she gets it. Now, there's a conversation to be had about why we expect young women performers to constantly shift and evolve and jump out of a fire breathing dragon and like jump through hoops and like submerge themselves. And like, there's a conversation about that. You know, I talked in the Britney video on the For Harriet channel um, in Taylor Swift's documentary. She talks about how women artists have to keep new hairstyle, new stylist, new video, like have to keep because people get bored with women, even young women. Even a 19 year old. Yeah, totally. So again, right, in the Vogue article, Billy talks about, in fact, let me bring up the, the quotes. Let me just go ahead and read these quotes. I don't listen to male music. Why are people not interested in music and work of pop stars above age 40? Because we just want to consume young women. I mean, that's that's just it. And I mean, Little Nas X is doing the same thing in terms of playing the chameleon really smartly. Yeah, but is there a difference between um, 
the kinds of social pressures that a little Nas X faces versus what a, a young woman faces, they're not the same, right? They might be doing the same thing, but the reasons, the motivations are different. The, the social structures are different. Okay. Um, so Billy for a long time wore the, the baggy shit. Let's, do I want to pull up the, uh, is this it? Oh, okay. Oh, well, I'm, I am, um, blocking it, but I exerted some clips from the article. A teenage pop star bearing all to telegraph her maturity is nothing new, but Billy, but Eilish has a point to make. Her new look plus a comeback single that confronts abusers who exploit underage girls puts the onus on the viewer to consider their baggage. Don't make me not a role model because you're turned on by me, she says. Her body was the initial reason for her my depression when I was younger. A situation worsened when she quit dancing at 13 due to injury, hence the baggy clothes. Then fame made that image into a flashpoint. She knows that corsets, among the most controversial garments in the history of fashion, will rile people. Um, although Eilish wanted to explore their beauty, sorry, this is not in this one. I'll just keep reading. Although Eilish wanted to explore their beauty, the shapes, lacing design, she was also drawn to their original restrictive function. If I'm honest with you, I hate my stomach and that's why. She thinks that's shallow. I disagree. It's hard enough for anyone to negotiate the conflicts between intellectually rejecting patriarchal beauty standards and hardwired personal frustration, let alone when you're one of the most scrutinized teenagers in the world and your body is, as Eilish calls it, your deepest insecurity. That's fucking interesting to me, right? So what do we get from that? One, Billy says that the idea to go full femme fatale 1940s pinup was completely her idea. She wanted to try something. I think one of the concerns, and I think that this is a really legitimate concern, is when young pop stars are transitioning from girl to womanhood, not a girl, not yet a woman, as Britney would say, there is often the explicit portrayal of a more adult sexuality. Happens all the time, happens to Britney. You know, like the classics are Britney, Christina, Miley, Ariana. Like it's just a thing that happens. And so when we see it happening, very predictable, like clockwork, you're like, okay, so this again. And I think that that kind of cynicism is warranted. Totally. And by the way, I actually kind of think that based on what she says in the the article, like Billy is truly feeling the push and pull, the push and pull. But that's fine, right? Like this is a super famous 19 year old girl who is trying to navigate the body shit we all have to navigate, trying to navigate uh, a healthy relationship to dating. I saw on uh, one of the new videos on Vogue.com, she said she just went on her first date. So trying to navigate intimacy and sexuality and desirability. And that means you're going to play and try things on. Fine, right? Figuring that out. Regular old despair does not equal depression. There's def. I think we want to consume young people. Even the white boy of the month actors are never over 35. Um, no, I think we have a, um, we have an obsession with youth, but men get to age. Men get to age. There's a reason why older male actors consistently get to be paired with women in their 20s and 30s. Yeah. Um, Madonna was the most well-known for her extreme styles. Then came Gaga and Nikki Rihanna. Dyeing her hair and wearing spikes and leather became normalized and people were less afraid of that. Yeah. Yeah. 
I wonder how she addresses the privileges of being able to change her look so often. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. What else does she say here that I thought was interesting? Oh, okay. Here's another one. Let me see if I can find it up on here. Uh, oh, this is going to be a lot. Oh, you're not even going to be able to read it all. But anyways, I can read it. The celebration of her in opposition to more scantily dressed pop girls concealed a nasty misogynist, sometimes racist subtext. It also hurt Eilish negotiating her own dawning womanhood. Because of the way that I feel that the world sees me, I haven't felt really desired, she says, then sighs. But that's really my whole life, though, so I don't know if it's anything to do with fame. She's noticed a TV trope where as soon as a classic hot girl enters a relationship, she undergoes a personality transplant. She She's this completely different character of wifey, Eilish says, baffled. It really fucked me up. Everybody's like, you can't make a wife out of a hoe. And it's like, you're attracted to that person, though. You created that person. If those are the terms, Eilish is out. Suddenly, you're a hypocrite if you want to show your skin. And you're easy, and you're a slut, and you're a whore. If I am, then I'm proud. Make... Me and all the girls are hoes and fuck it, you know, let's turn it around and be empowered in that showing your body and showing your skin or not should not take any respect away from you. Sure. Sure, Billy. I mean, I'm not opposed to that. I think it is the kind of statement you make when you're 19 and haven't lived, but that's fine, right? Like, that's okay. Like, what exactly are we expecting from this woman, right? Like, she's a young woman. She's figuring out what it means to be sexy, what it means to be desirable, playing dress up. I always talk about the outlandish, the outlandish shit that I wore when I was 18 and 19. You know, I wore a fucking Halloween costume that was lingerie. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like, like freshman year of college. Because that's what you're supposed to do. The, the whole transition between girlhood and womanhood should be about safe space for play and exploration and like an opportunity to figure out, do I like this or do I like that? Now, what complicates it with a pop star, with somebody like a Billy is, it's also a product. And I think that's where we get those kind of like, oh, like I don't know feelings. Because as much as we want to be able to say, like I was just earlier today, I did a, a live video about glitch feminism for the Patreon and for the members, right? Where it's talking about our relationship to gender and how gender can be, is constraining. You know, like gender is a straitjacket and we don't have the opportunity to play. It gets hard when the playground is also a marketplace. And that's where it is for Billy, right? And there's nothing she can, I mean, she's a, she's a pop star. She's like one of those famous people in the world. There's no way for her to opt out. So I do think we have to, as consumers, right? As people who have a critical eye, have to just give some space. Okay, images are so hard to control in a way that text isn't. Even efforts to reclaim sexuality in an empowered way are often undermined by people just consuming an image. Yeah. I feel like I'm in a very, very interesting and brain boosting English class, <laughs> the way we're reading the interview. <laughs> and then our professor, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, I think that this is like, what I do appreciate though, okay, so the complicated part of this. So I like that Billy gets to have the agency to say, I did the oversized baggy, I don't wanna show my body thing, now I wanna do this thing. But what I appreciate the most even outside of the images, even though I appreciate that Billy has said, oh, I'm an image maker, okay? I'm a pop star who understands the power of image making, okay? And the power of controlling the narrative with images, like that's some next level shit, 
I appreciate that. Um, what I most appreciate about the video for Your Power, this this British Vogue debut, the accompanying video interview with British Vogue, is that Billy is not going to get stuck performing sadness. I think that for, I appreciate that she was an avatar for the angst of being 15, 16, 17. That's a hard time. It fucking sucks. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a hard time. I like that. I appreciate that. But I also like that she gets to say, all right, I, I feel great now. I feel great now. And I understand that you came to me because like I was the sad, I was a sad girl with like the weird blue stuff running down my eyes and like into the creepy shit and the oversized like hip hop inspired aesthetic. But I'm actually not just that. You know, another thing I've really been interested in, you know, is this idea of multiplicity. That we have multiple selves. That we we can exhibit a range of selves. And that is jarring, right? Because people get used to consuming us a certain way, but it's not your responsibility to continue to serve the thing just because it's what's expected. I love that. I love that for her. <laughs> Like, that's interesting to me. And I love that the Your Power video is not the British Vogue aesthetic. As gorgeous as the British Vogue aesthetic is, as well tailored and beautiful that freaking blush color palette, freaking so good. But it's still, you know, that Your Power video is still kind of weirdo Billy, you know, like getting choked by an anaconda or whatever that is. I like that. I like young girls being able to say, I'm this and I'm that. Yeah, that's what I'm into. Um, all right. And I also like that, like, you know, Growth is natural and normal. You know, stagnation is not natural. And also, you know, I, I get that there is the, the complicated issue of the gazes thing. But even in those images, I know that she's dressed up in that way. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel male gazy to me. And I've really been trying to work through like, why am I not immediately off put by that set of images? I just think they're so fucking gorgeous. What is in the styling? It's the way that she's positioned. It's the way that she looks at the camera. Somebody tweeted me, it's the, the angle of the camera. There, It's not looking down on her. She's not doing the like, oh, like I wanna fuck poses. You can just be playing fun dress up. Right, she's sexualized, but not objectified. Yes, for anyone asking, yes. But like, the thing about being a, you know, person who enjoys sex is being sexualized in and of itself is not the problem. It's all of the other shit that becomes the problem. And so how do we, you know, I'm 32 as a grown ass lady who's having great sex. Um, I'm just kidding. Why do I feel, why did I say that? But I am, <laughs> I am. Um, how do we support young women who are trying, who are trying things on who are coming into themselves, who are newly appreciating their bodies, and who want to do that publicly, how do we support that while also saying, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You don't have to. I don't know. I think that that's the question. Yeah. 
I also something that I that I thought was really fascinating in um, the video for British Vogue that she did is there's still a bit of a dissonance between soft, you know, uh, bleach blonde Billy and soft makeup Billy and her persona. It doesn't quite, you know, there's still, it's kind, it still kind of clashes. The issue, I think it's probably hard to come off as authentic when you're trying to do this and that because people will always think you're being fake. Right, but people are this and that though. That's the thing. You know, it's like capitalism kind of pushes us to the lowest common denomina denominator. Like capitalism pushes us to reduce our identities to the thing that is most easily consumable. To the thing that we know will get us the the kind of response we desire but that's not really how humanity works that's not really how being a person works and you know i even feel this way you know one of the reasons why i decided to go hard on building up this and building up the personal stuff is i e even felt at my big age restricted by the idea that you are serious feminist woman like i i am serious feminist woman and i'm also this and I'm also fucking, and I'm also lingerie, and I'm also injectables. And so I don't want anybody to have to be governed by the fear of, if you can't consume this, then you don't want it. Okay, there can be two truths at the same time. I love this shoot, but I just feel like her position in the public eye automatically adds some inauthenticity because there's a boundary to what can be the front cover of a magazine. Sure. But, I mean, the thing, you know, so I think that when we're talking about a pop star, it's heightened. But I also think it's useful for us to consider how we shape ourselves to be palatable, to get the job, to get likes, to be desired, to be picked. Like, like Billie Eilish to be on the front of British Vogue, right? Like it's amplified, but she's not the only person performing. We're all performing to get the, the outcomes that we desire. I just think it's easier for us to like project all of this stuff onto the, the person of a 19 year old navigating the music industry. That's where I am right now. It's one of the first times she's showing off her sexualized body to the public. Her control of her image and her flexibility is what makes it special for me. Yeah. I think that's that's why I'm into it. Capitalism makes you need to choose from a much smaller range of widely consumed stuff, easily consumable options. Yeah. I know you love Chloe too. So how do you think her and Billy's way of managing the I'm not a girl, not yet a woman transition? I'm obsessed with Chloe. I think that she's so smart. I have talked about the fact that something that I appreciate about Chloe is she has also talked about not feeling great in her body and, you know, just wanting to feel good and feel sexy and all that. That's fine. It's fine, right? Like the thing about, you know, the the let me take off the clothes transition is it's predictable. It's cliche, right? Like, let's just embrace it for what it is. 
it's a moment, you know, let the young girls have their moments. But something that I appreciate about Chloe in particular is she's giving us thirst traps, but she's also giving us music. She's giving us thirst traps, but she's also giving us like, look at me in the studio producing this song from top to bottom all by myself. You know, like that's what I mean about how we all deserve to be able to embody our multiple selves. Okay. Stopping to praise them, then when they say it's because they groan. Yeah. Okay. Do I have any other? Considering she has had an abusive partner at a very young age, she was actually not a minor. I personally love that Billy is publicly can reclaiming control over her body. I mean, I take... Oof. I think, you know, the phrase reclaiming control is cliche. I, I think it um, it uh, obscures more than it clarifies the phrase, the phrase reclaiming your body. Because I think that, you know, often when we talk about reclaiming bodies, like it, you know, I have to ask, we always reclaim our bodies in the same way, you know? <laughs> like, I mean, there is something to be said about the fact that whenever we're reclaiming, we have to get undressed, <laughs> you know? And by the way, I do it too, right? Like, I'm in it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> There's definitely, you know... Um... It feels that people can't see celebrities as human and only want one side of them to maintain their parasocial relationships. Yeah, but but that's but that's the thing that you get into with um, consumption. You know, I had a conversation on on the Patreon with uh, Hanif Abdurraki, right? And he wrote this fucking amazing book called The Little Devil in America. And there was like this uh, this excerpt that I talked to him about and he talked about how consumption is not love we are led to believe that consumption equals love that because I choose to spend money on you because I want to extract as much as I can from you that I that that's love no <laughs> no <laughs> that's closer to exploitation than love and so that's how so many um entertainers get trapped is because, you know, we don't love them. We love to consume them. We love the products. Do you think this would be viewed differently if it was U.S. Vogue versus British Vogue? Honestly, I thought initially it was U.S. Vogue. I don't think so. She was being authentic, being the weird girl all this time. No, it becomes an act at some point. No one is just one thing. Capitalism makes us scared to show our complexity. Well, maybe she, maybe she is the weird girl. Maybe she's the weird girl and this girl. <laughs> I don't necessarily think that's inauthenticity. And I do still think she's a weird girl because that new video was weird girl-ish. Um, my nieces are Billy's age and I want them to be able to flourish in ways that I couldn't when I was this age. I just think that people, young people deserve options. That's what I want, right? Like that you deserve to be able to choose from every option and you can choose all of it or none of it. And that's fine. But, right, like this is not just about individual choices, right? The reason why people don't choose all of it or none of it is because there are huge, you know, I always want to underscore, let's go back to the, the idea that all of this is structural. There are structural consequences for multiplicity, <laughs> you know.
Changing your image, especially as an artist, a whole human being, shouldn't be difficult or uncommon. They're human beings, not products. Artists don't exist to be easily consumable as people. I mean, Billie Eilish is a product. I mean, you know, like I understand what you're saying, but Billie Eilish is a corporation. Yeah, products get to be on the cover of British Vogue. So I think we have to like contend with that. This whole moment really makes me think about Most Girls by Haley Steinfeld. I've never seen that. Kim, you, oh, look, thank you. <laughs> thank you. The entertainment industry is the current adaptation of the 1800s industrial factory. Yeah, and I think the interventions that people make are, are pretty modest, right? So it's so interesting that we give Billy so much credit. Like, I give Billy a lot of credit for just being so fucking thoughtful. Like, she has, she's thought deeply about this, you know? Um, you know, thoughtful in a, a teenager way, but thoughtful. <laughs> okay. Um, I give Billy credit for um, being, being able to say, I chose this. Like being very explicit in the article about I chose this. But like, that's like, you know, <laughs> barely. Sorry, that's my boo. Sometimes I'm in sweats with baggy clothes. Sometimes I'm in a cute feminine dress. Others I'm showing more skin. Still me, totally. Vogue USA got a lot of pushback for not being forward thinking. Look, Vogue, American Vogue is going to be retro until somebody not named Anna Wintour is the editor in chief. Let's just be honest about it. Do you consider yourself a product or do you think you're at a level where that isn't even a thing? I am 100% a product. <laughs> Girl, I'm trying to get shot about it. Like, you know, like influencers, yes. And that's also, you know, I mean, maybe I'll talk about this in a different video, but that's also why I have to have such hard boundaries around my private life. That's also why I don't befriend people from the internet. Um, that's also why, you know, I'm dating this man and I have strongly discouraged him from watching my content. I don't, I, because I, I would like a space where I don't have to be a product. I, I want that space to remain sacred, intact. I think how you dress and present yourself can sometimes say something about whether or not you're weird, but I feel you. Yeah, I think you can dress weird. While we're still talking about entertainment, black entertainers and their overpopularization have become modern minstrelsy. Uh, I would need some more... Uh, I would need some more context for that. There's no decision that's really free under patriarchy. I don't like choice feminism, but I guess that's all we got. Right. We're all being coerced all the time. That's why like the conversation, our conversations about entertainment just have to become more sophisticated. Because, you know, Megan the Stallion is not the only person who's being coerced into twerking on Instagram. We're all being coerced. So, what about it? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, um,.
What on earth is minstrelsy? Oh, well, minstrelsy is, well, y'all gotta look that up. I can't go through a history of minstrelsy. I don't think her look has changed much at all. With this new cover to me, she still isn't showing much skin. It's provocative, definitely, but that aesthetic isn't alien to her. Yeah, that is also something that I've noticed. It's not like she's super exposed. It's just form-fitted. And even in that black look, which is like my favorite look, she's literally wearing full bodysuit and corset. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... There's not a whole bunch of, you know, like a little cleavage. I think the U.S. Vogue and Vanity Fair used to be the place to show new personas, but it got stuck. I think maybe the last was the Kim and Kanye, and that was more validation than image was. Yeah, okay, I understand what y'all are saying now about British, for, <laughs> British Vogue versus... American Vogue. Yeah, I think American Vogue is safer. Yeah. I just love how honest she is about still being uncomfortable showing her body because I feel that even with her body fitting within society's accepted within society's accepted standard. Yeah, um, this is something else I wanna talk about, right? How there is this pressure, right? So Billie Eilish became like a figurehead, like an icon of like body positivity or something where she's like, whatever. But it's like, whatever, like, because that's not fair. It's not fair to like tokenize people or whatever because we're all working through our shit. And I do think that we get boxed in by trying to perform, I've talked about this before, having to perform hyper-confidence, having to perform, I have all of my shit together. I like that this is a 19-year-old girl who's like, yeah, like this, maybe this is contradictory, but I don't care, and maybe, and it's like, okay, great, be honest about that. You're young, you still have time to figure it out. And frankly, you're probably never gonna figure it out because we're all fucked up, okay? <laughs> this topic isn't sophisticated either. We're all being coerced, so what about it? I mean, I think that... The sophistication has to come in with projecting too much onto the individual choices of a 19 year old. Yeah. So if we want to have a sophisticated conversation about it, we have to have a, 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 a complex conversation about the, the myriad systems and structures that push us toward certain kinds of self presentation. And what are the consequences of opting out? So when I say we're all being coerced, I am trying to defensively say that the, the picking apart of the Billie Eilish image is not doing the kind of liberatory or analytic work that you think it's doing. Because yes, what Billie is engaged in is a very like cliched evolution. But, but why is that happening? And if a 14 or 15 year old girl sees the evolution of oversized Billy, oversized Gucci short set Billy to um, Terry Mugler like corset Billy and feels like she has to emulate that to be desired, what's at work there? That's an interesting conversation. But too often our conversations around celebrity are boiled down to, well, I, this makes me feel uncomfortable. Okay. Okay. I 
I just hope Billy doesn't go too deep into male gaze BS. I mean, there's no indication that she would do that because she's already given us a new, a new music video that is very clearly not that, where she's basically wearing sweats. You know, so I just feel like some of this is um, concern trolling a little bit. Body ambiguity neutrality is an underrated topic. Yes, I'm very much in favor of body neutrality. Very much. This reminds me of when Avril Lavigne switched her style on us. Yeah, but was Avril Lavigne gonna wear tank tops and Hot Topic belts and ties forever? I mean, I just feel like a part of this is you just want to try on some different shit. Bless the work you're doing. Oh, your birthday is March 13th. Yes, but why does everyone assume that covering up is automatically avoiding male gaze? Purity is heavily fetishized. Yeah, I think that, I think this is like, this is an interesting thing, right? Because especially when we're talking about a blonde haired, blue eyed white girl navigating patriarchal gazes is trickier because absolutely there is this fetishization of the virginal, you know, like demure thing. You know, I mean, I guess that's the thing about patriarchy, right? Where it's like, it's literally constructed to make all of us losers. There's no actual winning. Because no matter how Billy chooses to present herself, it's always going to be weaponized, right? And I think that she acknowledges that. I'm trying to give y'all a swoop, but it's not working. You know, it's hard to give a swoop when you got braids. <laughs> Young girls whose bodies developed a little earlier have already experienced that scrutiny, harassment, invasion, which makes them take longer to fully embrace being sexy. Yeah, people being hard on Avril because she full on was like, I'm not like the other girls. Yeah, but like, didn't Avril Lavigne also become a famous person when she was like 18, 19? Yeah, like, do I contradict myself? Very well, I contradict myself. I'm sorry, but like, contradiction is a privilege. Like, like, I don't... Not me quoting Walt Whitman. I'm doing that because I just read Glitch Feminism. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm okay with giving people space to backtrack and try it again and fuck up and be hypocrites. I'm okay with that. <laughs> the number of hours I waste trying to make my braids swoop. Yes. <laughs> is desexualization even possible as a woman? That is a good question. That's a good question. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Or, okay, I think 
is objectification ever possible as a woman? I'm not sure. I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, I don't think so because, you know, it's like even I've been in church, right? Like full on like, well, I always wear like cute church stuff. But like, you know, being, you know, hit on and harassed and all that, right? Like it's not possible. I you know it's like, you know, women in hijab, you know, talk about being harassed. Like it's not possible because the objectification is not even about the adornment. That's not really what it's about. I know a few women who've gained weight on purpose in order to desexualize themselves. I've heard lesbian women say this. I'm sure it's not just lesbian women who say that, but I've explicitly heard Lesbian women say that they've gained weight to try to minimize the kind of sexual attention that they get from men. Also, didn't Avril's label have a pretty heavy hand in her not like the other girl's branding? Of course, wasn't, how old was she when Complicated came out? Complicated was my shit, by the way. Don't make me go into singing, Kim, okay? Tell me why'd you have to go and make things so complicated? That was my shit. (laughs) See the way you're, (laughs) okay, that was my shit. Anyways, yes, a young girl who needed an opposition, right? Like who needed to present herself as being in opposition to the Christina's and Britney's and Mandy's. (laughs) Complicated was a bop. (laughs) That was a bop. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Oh. Chill out what you yelling for. <laughs> oh, someone signed me. Okay, I think we <laughs> I think we we're going to wrap it up here. We're going to wrap it up. Um as long as female bodies are viewed as commodities, I doubt weight or lesbianism can fix it. Um yeah. Yeah. Skater Boy. I don't love Skater Boy as much. Complicated. Now that was a la, 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 la. Because life's like this. La, 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 la. That's the way it is. (laughs) I feel like so goofy today. (laughs) I'm saying multiple times on the internet. I am tired. Um... All right, it's time to wrap this up. I'm just doing weird shit on the internet now. Um, anyways. <laughs> Y'all see why I had to make a whole different, like a whole different channel, a whole different silo for this. Anyways, we're gonna wrap this up. Um, I like the, I like Billy. I'm excited to see where she goes with this. I like that. She gets to try on new things and explore different things and not be boxed in. I hope she does have as much power as she says, as much control as she says. I believe that she does. And um, yeah, that's all I got. Shop for Harriet.com to buy some merch. Join the memberships or become a member on Substack if you want to talk, if you want to hear me talk about shit that I would never say in public. <laughs> I I have said that I'm not going to reveal intimate details about my relationship in public and I won't. So that's where they'll be. Um that's it. Love y'all. I will talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>